So the last tab in the risk criteria section of the application is the risk matrix itself. So once you build out your consequence categories and your likelihood categories, the section will begin by simply drawing a matrix for you that includes the number of rows that match with the number of consequence categories you have and the number of columns that match up with the number of likelihood categories that you have. From there, you will need to basically assign a risk ranking to each one of the matrix intersections. So in this case, uh, a consequence of five at a likelihood of zero is assigned a consequence category of zero. But I can change that to be whatever I want. I can assign it a seven, I can assign it a two, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at zero. And then you would need to do that for every matrix intersection. Now, uh, you'll note that we do have multiple different dimensions of consequence. So what we're looking at is the safety dimension of consequence, but we can change over to the environmental um, dimension of consequence. And again, you can have different numbers of consequence categories. Uh, so you're going to define the table separately for safety, environmental asset, and so on. And uh, as you'll see, the environmental matrix and the safety matrix don't match up. So that you can set uh, different risk rankings in the same cell for the different attributes or the different dimensions of risk. And you need to define them, uh, well, you need to define them for everything that you're going to use. So if you only use safety, you only need to define it for safety. But if you're going to use all five, then you'll need to put in uh, the assignments of the risk rankings for all of the intersections in all the matrices that you use in your studies.